So for the most part, you're going to see insect symptoms and signs. Uh, very often you won't see the insect. Of course, some of the signs would be the actual insects. This is psyllids on tomato. It has piercing sucking mouth parts. So if you were to look at the top portion of the leaf, you would see stippling. So some insects have chewing mouth parts, and these include the larvae of moths or butterflies so, or caterpillars, soft flies, which are not flies. You can, they're also called pear slugs or rose slugs. Um, they're not slugs either, and uh, it's only the larvae. Um, they're related to wasps, beetle larvae, or adults. They all have chewing mouth parts, tree crickets, grasshoppers, and walking sticks, and then fly or gnat larvae. Okay, here's some tent caterpillar damage. And I just want you to note the white dot in the head of this caterpillar. That's actually a, a, an egg from a tachinid fly, and that's going to parasitize this caterpillar. So it's a great natural enemy that naturally occurs in our area. Here's our elm sawfly damage. There's another sawfly that affects elms. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, this particular root weevil is a black vine weevil. It's a beetle. And for the most part, it's really just a, a damage on adult or on foliage, not on roots. Um, the soil is too cold in our area for the larvae, which lives in the soil over the winter to do much damage to woody plants. It will affect uh, things like heuchera, very much susceptible to root weevil. Here's a red-legged grasshopper, mostly on the east side of the mountains, but you will see them here on this side. So other damage you might see are stippling, bleaching, curling, bronzing, and distortion. And this is a rhododendron lace bug, and you can see on that, especially on that bottom leaf, that's what stippling is. It's just these little specks. It looks like little white dots, white or yellow dots. And these are from piercing sucking mouth parts. So these include leaf hoppers, lace bugs, plant bugs, aphids, psyllids, mealybugs, scales, also white flies, mealybug, adelgids, etc. And this is actually damaged. This is actually the rhododendron lace bug you see here. And uh, they're going to be on the underside of the leaf. So you have that sign. You've got the adults, which are they're actually very pretty insects, and then the nymph. But the thing you're going to see if you don't see the insects are these black specks. That's fecal matter. Here's some stippling on an ash leaflet from a plant bug. These are true bugs. Silvered foliage would be from rasping sucking mouth parts and the only insect in this group is thrips and thrips is always plural. Don't ask me why but that's the way that is. Okay, then distorted plant parts. You have curled or cupped leaves, twisted growth, points, or galls, and these can be caused by thrips, aphids, and then there's a bunch of gall makers. Um, there's some wasps, fl gall, flies, psyllids, aphids, etc. Adelgids are in here too. Okay, so here's the uh, distorted damage on blueberry from thrips. Here's some distorted growth uh, from aphids. Here's what this gall looks like on oaks. Here's the um, slice of a coolie spruce gall adelgid. And you can actually see the insect in there. Um, but what happens is it looks like it's a cone almost. As, as it ages, it turns brown. It almost looks like a cone. Poplar petiole gall aphid. This happens a lot on black cottonwood. And so you'll see this at the base of the petiole. And uh, if you slice it in open, you're going to see these white fuzzy aphids. And if you took broadleaves with me in the fall, you saw a lot of this. This is boxwood psyllid damage. You know, it really doesn't hurt the plant. Um, it thrives with, with this insect. So really not much you can do as far as management. Okay, so you're going to see dieback of plant parts, uh, twigs or branches. Sometimes it's the death of the entire plant, and this could be wood borers, bark beetles, scale insects, adelgids, gall makers, root feeding larvae. 
so this is bronze birch borer and so you're going to see that uh, whole sections of the tree has died back um, on Himalayan white pine or white birch you see a lot of this where it's the lower foliage looks okay but then the top is dyed uh, if you were going to look on the trunk, and this is a side view of the trunk, you would see these D-shaped holes. That's an indicator that it has bronze birch borer. Balsam woolly adelgid on subalpine fir, which, you know, it's already got problems when it's down here. It should not be grown in the Seattle area. It really should be up at an elevation. So just one more problem that it's going to get down here. So you may not see... Um, the insects, but you might see some of their products. So one of the things you'll see is honeydew. And honeydew will provide food for sooty mold. So you're gonna, you may very well see sooty mold out there and you think it's a fungus, but if you were to scrape it off the leaf, it goes away. It's just growing on the honeydew. And so when you see this, uh, you've got something with piercing sucking mouth parts. Um, aphids, not all scales, but uh, the soft scales, leaf hoppers, mealybugs, psyllids, and white flies. Um, and then you would see these dark fecal specks like you saw from the lace bug, but greenhouse thrips also do that, and certain plant bugs do that as well. And then the other thing you might see are fecal pellets, which are going to be larger, and those are going to be from the moths, beetles, or soft flies. So here's the sooty mold, most likely from an, an aphid. And so that honeydew is providing the food for this mold to grow. You could definitely just take a sponge and wipe this off. So if you look on the left here, you see the honeydew. If you were going to touch that, it would be very sticky. And it's something that ants really prize and they'll do what they can to protect the aphids. They will actually fight off predators, so it's really important if you're going to try to manage aphids, you have to manage the ants as well. And again, here's the fecal spots again from the lace bug. These are thrips. These are really tiny. You look at the main vein there. That's a very tiny insect. It's very difficult to see with the naked eye. You do need a hand lens, but these small black dots are going to be an indicator between that and the symptoms. So other signs you might see are tents, webs, mats, tent caterpillars, webworms, leaf rollers, leaf tires, mites. Um, I meant to take that off of there. We're going to talk about mites later. Spittle bug. That's going to start showing up here. I know somebody posted a picture of spittle bug on her samples. Um, cast skins. These are that was left behind from insects because they have exoskeletons. They have to molt as they grow. And then you may see pitch masses and sap flow. These might be from certain moths or beetles that are feeding on wood. So here we've got some aphids, but then that li those little white things are the cast skins from aphids. Here's the tent from fall webworm. Here's the tent from uh, tent caterpillar, and then you can see those black pellets in there are the fecal matter. So leaf mining is when insects tunnel between upper and lower leaf surfaces, and you'll see serpentine mines or blotch mines, and these can be caused by flies, true flies, small moths, beetles, and soft flies. And, uh, these are specific to plants. So, for instance, here we have a spinach -like leaf miner. That leaf miner is only going to go for spinach. And you can see it's more of a blotchy mine, but this is caused by the larva of a fly. This is a leaf miner that's out there right now, a madrone leaf miner, and it's caused by a moth. Here's another thing. I mentioned sawflies earlier. There's one that chews on the leaves, but this is a leaf miner sawfly, and they will be coming out anytime. You're going to see them on Camper Down Elm. I just looked at one. It wasn't there yet. Usually in our class, we get to see the adults laying eggs on the leaves and then come back later. 
Um, they're not there yet, but they will be soon. So keep your eyes open. Almost every camper down elm is going to end up looking like this. And here's a poplar black mine beetle. So it's another type of uh, insect that caused mines.